on YouTube, welcome back to Destiny Tracker, I am Pete TT and today we are talking about the game mode countdown. Specifically, I am going to be giving you some tips that I found helpful through the beta, they definitely helped me improve my game. These have come from myself, they've come from my audience over on Twitch and things like that and, and overall I think they are a pretty good bunch of tips and hints to you know help yourself with a bit of success come the final release of Destiny 2 in September. Like I say, I'm no PvP god, I'm sure there are going to be plenty of videos out there eventually on how to get good at Countdown, but these are some of the top things that I've learned through the beta and yeah, I think without further ado we'll just jump straight into it. The first and biggest tip that I can give you guys for the countdown game mode is teamwork and team communication. This means guys, if wherever possible, go in as a team of four. If you go in as a team of three and you have a solo player, it's not as bad, but definitely try to avoid going in solo. It is one of them game modes where, especially if you come up against another team where they're actually teamed up and communicating, you will pretty much get your butt whooped. Um, you know, it's, it's um, I've personally found through the beta that it is very sweaty. It is very much your kind of pro players in there. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It does help you get better at PvP. I, I found that towards the end of the beta, I was definitely doing a lot better in the game mode than, than when it first came out. But yeah, teamwork and communication has to be the number one top tip. Don't expect to go in there solo if you're not a PvP god and do well. Next then, something else I've, I've kind of found out isn't just a thing for Countdown, it is general PvP, and that is team shooting, okay? Team shooting is going to be my number two tip, okay? If you're going two on one, you, you team shoot that Guardian, you know? If there's two on two, you pick a target, you call it out. Again, this comes back to the teamwork and team communication. You go, right, we're going to focus this guy and then focus that guy. You team shoot things, guys, you are going to kill them an awful lot quicker. I lose count of the amount of times that I have been team shotted over the beta you know it really is a valuable tool in your disposal for pvp now it's 4v4 you know run running twos i would say you know split split your fire team into two teams of two run it as two teams of two and team shoot everything you see <laughs> um number three then map knowledge okay if you didn't realise, guys, it is pretty clear to me, I, I'm a former Call of Duty player, there is a, a lot of Activision and Call of Duty put into the countdown map that we played in the beta. You know, it's your typical three-lane map with a left, middle and right, with a few cut-throughs and choke points, you know, at various points of the maps. If you guys have played the map, you will know exactly what I mean. There are a few stairwells that lead from the left and right-hand side into the middle lane, and vice versa. So, you know, knowing where you are on the map, Knowing where to back out of certain firefights into other areas is a very key point of any kind of strategical game. You know, if you don't know where you're going and you don't know where your lanes of sight are and things like that, then you can very quickly find yourself getting gunned down. Something I did an awful lot <laughs> in the first few games was not knowing where the lines of sight were and I'd run around the corner and bang, that was it. I was getting team shotted, which obviously was our second point. Um, so yeah, definitely guys, learn the map, learn where you're going to be, learn where you want to go, learn how to flank other people, you know, if your team are engaging enemies, um, know where you are on the map and know that you can kind of, you know, drop down to the middle route over the doorway and be flanking them and shooting them from behind. Again, then your, your map knowledge, your teamwork, your communication and your team shooting all comes into play. Next then, we are going to say pick your fights and know when to back off. That is very, very important, okay? Knowing what fights to actually get involved in and what ones to instantly back out of can very quickly mean the difference between, you know, successfully winning your gunfight and uh, abysmally losing your gunfight. As I have found out on many occasions, you know, 2v1s in these kind of modes are not good. 4v1s are definitely aren't good, especially when the other team are communicating and their team shooting, they all put a shot on you, you're kind of insta-dead as soon as you see them. So, you know, that there's no shame, guys, in backing out of fights and baiting enemy towards you and then you get a cheeky grenade off or, you know, the rest 
to your team are waiting around the corner for them and, and you gun them down that way. I think it is a very useful tip. I definitely think it's something that we're going to see a lot of in the countdown game mode. Next up, don't waste revives at the end of a round. So if you didn't know, guys, there is an elimination style revive system put into countdown. And uh, you can only revive players or you can only have a certain amount of revives on your team for per all the games. So if you know you got teammates dead but you win the round, don't go and waste a revive getting a teammate up at the end of the round because it's not going to be very useful. It wastes a revive. And you never know in the next round you might need that revive and not have it because you got a teammate up needlessly at the end of the previous round. Next then, know where the power ammo drops and when, okay? We know how long the timers are from when you first spawn in for power ammo. Know exactly where they spawn. Know the line of sight to the power ammo. You know, you don't want to be going and running to the power ammo in the scope of a waiting guardian just waiting to shoot you in the back while you load your fusion rifle. Again, a very good point, something I didn't think of. This one came up from somebody in chat when we were talking about, you know, tips and hints and things like that to get better at PvP. And I think it's a very valuable point. Next then, use your abilities, okay? Things like the Titan Shield are very good to block off certain areas of approach. You know, you can block entire doorways. If the enemy do run through the shield, they are going to take a considerable amount of damage. If you team these up well, as well with, say, the Warlock's Healing Rift or the Warlock's Damage Rift, these can be very nice. They can give you very good protection from enemy fire. They can give you, you know, a lot better healing abilities. They can give you a, a lot better damage output compared to the other team. So yeah, make, make sure you're using these abilities in the correct way, guys. Don't go, you know, just banging it up and then running away from it, leaving it, you know, right in the spawn because that is pretty useless. Next then, all round defense. Make sure your team are close enough to assist each other, but covering multiple lanes of approach. Now, this isn't just if you're defending, this is also if you are attacking, you know, if you get to an area and you get to plant the bomb, spread your team out accordingly, okay? Let's uh, let's look at the countdown map we did have in the beta. Let's say that we are the attackers, so we've got to plant the bombs. We are obviously starting on the lower left-hand side of the map and we're going to go and plant the bomb at the top right-hand side of the map. Get in, get the bomb you know, loaded, get get it ticking down, and then make sure you split your fire team up, but not too much, okay? Make sure that you're close enough that you can help each other when the enemy make their move and they pick a lane to come up. Uh, what, what we found was very useful, if you use the top room, then you can have one person kind of hanging out on the right hand side looking down towards the other bomb. You can have one teammate kind of looking down towards where the power ammo is on the middle stairs and one person covering the rope you came up from your spawn just to make sure, you know, they don't try and flank you. The fourth player is kind of freely running between the lot of them and it is their job to be the first one to whatever side is needed when the enemy attackers decide to come to you, you know. If, uh, if the roaming fourth person jumping between the lot is needed on the right hand side they should be the first one there followed up by the other team members but it's also important to know those other team members should still keep an eye on the routes they were checking out to make sure there's not a lone guardian coming up to try and flank you with a super or power ammo or anything like that next then select the right weapons this is something i did not do i liked scout rifles in destiny one for pvp and pve i thought that i could take my does not compute into competitive pvp and do well with it well, I was surprised when it didn't work well. You know, at the moment, or at least through the beta, the hand cannons, the auto rifles, pulse rifles, they were exceptionally good. You know, you, you do want to make sure if you're going into this kind of game mode that you take the correct arsenal with you. A close to medium range weapon and a medium to longer range weapon is always going to be handy. Next then. Have a mixed team. It's, it's pretty much pointless, guys, running four Sentinel Titans, you know. Even if you're all running, a titan you can split it up you can have two sentinels you can have two strikers you can all run different ability trees and things like that you know it, it really just doesn't add up when you're all running exactly the same you get no kind of playability with it you, you kind of stuck to one route you all have to play the same to make those subclasses work if you're spread out either over different classes or with different skill trees and supers if you are the same character you at least have some kind of maneuverability in what you can do Next then, cover orbs so they can't get revives. You know, pretty much like you do currently in Trials of Osiris, guys. If you get a kill, you watch the orb, you don't just leave the orb and go running off down the street to try and get the next kill, you know. The bottom line is, if you are 
killing guardians and you get one of their team down you're now in a four on three situation you definitely don't want to waste that advantage by letting them get the revive so cover that revive when they come in again your team shooting and thing comes into play you get the second one down you're now in a four on two situation again you know that some of this is probably common sense guys but i just thought i would put it out there for you Finally then, know when to push and know when not to. Again, we kind of covered this earlier a little bit when I said pick your fights and know when to back off. But, um, you know, know, knowing when to push forward is as equally important as knowing when to back off. If you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation and you know that you've already put a good few shots on that Guardian and they are weak, you, you do want to push them and try to get that kill before they get their health and shield back up. But at the same point, you kind of want to know when to back off. Like, if you're one shot and, you know, the, the other enemy is at full health, it, it's pretty pointless trying to push them because the, the probability of you actually getting killed and losing that gunfight is incredibly high. So, yeah, you know, there's no shame in it. I said it earlier, guys, knowing when to back out of a fight, but at the same point, equally knowing when you should push and when it's safe to do so is always a good idea as well. And again, you know, all of these work well when you use them together. So knowing when to push. Again, if you do it with a teammate, you, you're using the communication of the team, you are team shooting and things like that, you're more likely to win the gunfight. Then you leave one of your team members with the orb while someone else kind of checks the area around you. All of these things, like I said, guys, I'm no PvP god, but all of these things are hints and tips that I have picked up over the beta weekend. They considerably helped my game towards the end of the beta. I started to enjoy it a lot more. I started to get kills. I started to get, you know, defuses and, and plants and things like that. And, and I really started to enjoy Enjoy the game mode a lot more and again I'm sure you know your top tier players will have videos out eventually so make sure to stay tuned on their channels I I'm sure you know someone will put together a sweaty guide on how to be sweaty and destroy everything in countdown but that's not going to be me what I can hopefully do though is help some of the medi more mediocre pvp guys like myself do a little bit better and hopefully enjoy the game mode a bit more. Now, if you found this video helpful, guys, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up the video. As always, thank you very much for watching. And until the next video, we'll catch you all soon.